from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max, make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out. In this lesson we take a look at the Arnold Physical Sky which can be used to simulate realistic skies. So in order to add Physical Sky to your scene, you first need to create an Arnold Sky Dome light. So Arnold light, change the type to Sky Dome. Let's make sure parameters are set to their default values and click once in the viewport to add the Sky Dome light. Let me just rename this to Sky here. Now in the Modify panel, make sure the color is set to texture. Now we need to define the physical sky as a texture for the sky dome light. And in order to do that, press M to go to the material editor. And if you right click in the maps, Arnold environment, you can find the physical sky. Now that you have created the physical sky, you can assign it as the texture for the sky dome light. Okay. Now let me select my physical camera and run the active shade to see what we are going to get. Also in the sky, in the Arnold sky dome light, let's make sure light shape visible is enabled so we can actually see the physical sky in the environment, not only its effect and lighting. So let me select the camera and make sure we have uh, the exposure value set to six. That might be not a very good number for an exterior lighting scene. So let me run the active shade. As you can see, we get this extremely bright render. I'm going to set my exposure value to probably something like 15.5. And as you can see, we have our physical sky in the scene. Let's take a look at the physical sky options. The first option, we have this azimuth elevation controls, which is enabled by default. And this way we can control the orientation and the position of the sun using the azimuth and the elevation values. Now the azimuth is the angle of the sun around the horizon and elevation is uh, basically allows you to control how high or elevated the sun is in the sky. So if I start with the elevation and decrease the value, we are basically lowering the position of the sun in the sky and making it closer to the horizon. And the azimuth, I can basically rotate my sun around the horizon. So let's go to something like maybe 10 five or let me rotate it 340 310 so here is our sun visible in the sky and now with the elevation i can make it closer to the horizon by decreasing the value or at something like 90 degree now the sun is at the zenith the highest point in the sky and now it can be considered noon. Let me use a smaller value for the elevation, like 10. And as you're using smaller values for the elevation, you're basically simulating sunset or sunrise. And now you can use the azimuth to rotate the sun around the horizon. So let's go to something like 120 maybe. So it's really up to you in this case, probably something like 305 degrees should be enough. Next, we have this sun direction. And if you disable azimuth elevation, you can actually control the position and the orientation of the sun in the sky using the sun direction values, but the azimuth and elevation values are a lot easier to control. So you can use them. Next, we have enable sun, which controls the visibility of the sun disk in the sky. And if I uncheck it, you can see uh, the sun is no longer in the sky and we only have the effect of the sky itself. Okay, let me enable that again. Next, we have this sun size, which controls the size of the visible sun disk. 
and also as I'm increasing this value you will notice that the shadows will become diffuser and diffuser so let's and the 0.5 value here is the physically accurate value for the Sun seen from the earth so let's try something like maybe five and as you can see we immediately get a bigger Sun disk and a lot diffuser shadows in this case you can probably use something like one next we have the sun and the sky tint and you can use these two colors to tint the overall color of the sky so in case of the sky tint if i click on this color i can define whatever color that i want and create some fantasy skies or just add a bit of color tint to the overall coloration of the sky it's absolutely up to you so you can create some beautiful fantasy skies if you wanted to and in case of the sky tint the same thing so let's try maybe using a bluish color and as you can see now we have this blue light coming from the sun let me use white for now for both sky and sun tint we have this ground albedo and this color controls the overall amount of light rays reflected from the planet surface back to the atmosphere and as you are using brighter color you are allowing more light rays to be reflected back from the planet surface back to the atmosphere we have this intensity which controls the overall intensity of the physical sky so if i go from one to three we are going to get a lot brighter physical sky and if i decrease this value we are going to get obviously a very darker physical sky and finally we have this turbidity value which controls the overall amount of aerosols particles and dust in the sky and as I increase this value you can see that we are getting a hazier sky a more polluted sky so let's maybe at 10 you can see the effect of the turbidity now we have a lot of aerosols and particles in the sky and we get this very hazy sky and if I decrease the value from the default value of three let's say to one we are going to get this very very clear sky okay and finally we have this uh, x y and z axis that you can use to change the overall orientation of the physical sky if you have a problematic scene for example also there is another way to add an arnold physical sky and what you can do if i just turn off the sky dome light that we have and controls our physical sky right now i can simply go to my environment and effect window by pressing 8 or from the rendering menu environment and connect the physical sky to the environment here okay and if i go to my physical camera and run the active shade we start to get our physical sky but we need to adjust the exposure value of our camera to see it a bit better so as you can see we have the same controls uh, if we actually assign our physical sky to the environment slot of the 3ds max and at the time being we have some noise in the scene we can go ahead and actually increase the overall uh, sample value of our physical sky in this case that we have our physical sky applied to the environment we need to go to our render setting and actually increase the sample value under the environment's background and atmosphere settings here and also we need to increase our diffuse samples for the indirect diffuse rates so that's about physical sky in arnold for 3ds max so see you in the next lesson Thank you for watching this free video tutorial from our course Comprehensive Introduction to Arnold for 3ds Max. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check the entire course out.